Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, today, I wanted to spend some time with you taking a look at water effects. Uh, I recently had a customer who, um, I, if you saw the shoreboards that I sent out recently, uh, they are coated in uh, my typical Mod Podge to get the ripple effect. And he has some uh, beautifully crafted miniature ships that he'd like to place on the surface of the ocean. And I've never actually had a specific uh, request to make the surface of water playable. And I see the advantages of doing that, and I'm always looking to try to improve things. So I've decided to take uh, the last, you know, week and a half or so and really go through and try to do some re-examining of the materials that I use for the water effects and look at some alternatives and try to piece out a way that I can improve them. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through all of the experiments that I did in order, if I can remember all the steps because it has been a little while. I started this around the first of the month um, and now it's the 14th or so. Oh, I guess it's two weeks. Anyway, um, so I wanted to walk you through all of that and show you the, the steps that I've gone, the problems that I see with different materials. And, um, and actually, this is sort of a revisit of a topic. You may remember um, about probably, I don't know, maybe eight months ago. My memory is not so good, but um, I actually did a whole series on water effects. And so, um, you know, if you're interested in just seeing what I come up with at the end of this, um, just skip to the end of the video, the last 10 minutes or five minutes or so, and you can get the summary of it. But if you're interested in following me and seeing all the steps that I went through, um, hopefully it'll be helpful to you, uh, you know, if you're interested in doing water effects, because there are a lot of techniques and materials out there on the market, and a lot of people will make recommendations, and there's not a really good explanation of how these effects compare. So I'm hoping that this can be useful to the community as a whole, and you can at least see how I've justified the direction I'm gonna go um, in the near future. So let's take a closer look at these and see what I've learned. So uh, about uh, two weeks ago, I guess, um, after talking with the customer, I decided to go to the local hardware store and purchase a variety of materials to try them out. I wanted to select acrylic caulks because sometimes I like to dry brush the um, water effects and you can't dry brush silicone, paint doesn't stick to it. So I thought, well let's go with the acrylics. I'm going to buy three varieties, they're all supposed to dry clear. And I'm also going to pick up a silicone just to try that out and see uh, how clear it dries by comparison. And then um, spread some of those out and, and see where I go from there. Luckily I was able to find these three in a slightly smaller than a full, full uh, uh, you know, caulking gun tube, um, and that actually affected my purchase, but I don't think I'm going to find many varieties that are going to differ from these, and I'll show you why. So I got, um, uh, just to give you a little rundown here, it's DAP Quick Seal. Um, I got a sort of a no-name brand, Phenosil uh, vinyl adhesive caulking, and um, uh, DAP's Dynaflex 230, uh, but um, anyway, it's supposed to be, um, you know, dry clear as well, and then I got um, GE apparently makes some silicones. This is their premium uh, silicone. Whoops, it's a little bit deformed, but this is their um, silicone 2 uh, clear. And so these were the four that I wanted to try out. So what I did is I grabbed an old uh, um, storage bin from some trees or something like that. I like doing it on clear plastic because I feel like I get the best sense of the translucence of the, the, you know, the clarity of the material. And, um, you know, wrote down the date so I wouldn't forget because I forget everything. And I just basically did a strip of each, um, you know, next side by side. I did just a bead. And then I um, took some and I spread it out. And I really wanted to get um, a variable thickness in the material because that can affect how long it takes to cure as well as how cloudy it might remain. Now, all of these products are, are supposed to go clear within two weeks. Um, so this is, you know, an optimum time to re-examine them. Um, so first, um, just to give you a quick look, this is the silicone. Now you notice here, um, I actually found it pretty difficult to spread it out into soft waves. Um, it's very goopy consistency, very sticky, and so it was kind of hard. I got a little bit, let's see if I really want to show you the close-ups because it's going to be pretty key. Let's see, there we go. Um, and um, I got a little bit better, you know, spreading as it got thinner, but you know, to me that doesn't look very clear. Uh, so, moving on, um, the Phenosil, um, this was actually probably the best consistency-wise, as well as clearing up. It uh, gave a pretty good effect, I could see using that on water, and I've seen many people reference using acrylic caulking for water effects. 
um, but without mention of any brands and not really seeing very good close-ups of the final product. So this was my most hopeful when I started out. And then um, you can see the um, DAP uh, Quick and the 230, um, you know, not really producing, uh, to me, very good results. So then I started thinking about these. We'll get to this side in a second. And I was waiting for them to dry, waiting for them to dry. And I did some more research. And lo and behold, I saw a master modeler in Japan using silicone to make some fantastic water effects. So I went, aha. And that actually made sense because I thought, you know, with the silicone, it's very rubbery and it retains its shape. And I, I'll talk about um, the hardness test of these in a minute. But that made me the most optimistic. So I started exploring that. So then I thought, perhaps it looks bad because it's clear. What if I tinted it? So here I injected some, uh, injected, that sounds a little more grandiose. I dropped some ink into it, mixed it up, spread it out. Here I tried some of the paint. This is actually the paint color I used to paint the bodies of my water. And then here I realized this was just way too much ink. So I went for a much lighter amount of ink in this side. And... First, um, again, what I tried to do is practice a little more with getting those ripple effects. Is it usable? You know, does it just take a little practice? And I'm still having quite a bit of trouble with it. Um, but it's producing a fairly glossy look. I give it a, a B plus for gloss. Um, then I thought, well, while I'm here, I might as well just try to make some small, you know, crashing waves or something like that so I played with that a little bit you know moderately successful could could use some more work it was just playing around really um, and here I tried spreading it thin and you know looking at it for its consistency well then I decided maybe I'm not giving it a fair enough test maybe I'm still applying it too thick so then I went to because I don't really I don't really like this this is not working for me so then I went and I applied it very very thin and I saw somebody else in another video using a stippling motion with a spoon to pick up the peaks and make it look uneven and like it's waves. So I tried that on this, and it, mm, it's just not the effect I want. I want soft, rolling waves, not a rapid, you know, crashing of, of, of small peaks. And I don't know. I don't know. I'm not too happy with it. It's very stiff. It's very hard to spread. And it might be the right choice for certain kinds of effects, but not universal for all the water effects I'd like to do with it. So I set that aside. Back to the drawing board. Research, research, video, video, research, video. Casting. I saw that a bunch of people... Whoops, I should go... Whoops, wrong one. That a bunch of people have been using silicone rubber and thinning it to use it for mold making. I didn't realize you could thin it. And actually I had a friend mention, have you thought about thinning it? So I got very excited about that. So a bottle of xylene later, yeah, you have to use xylene or toluene. Uh, both of those are not the friendliest chemicals to work with. Um, so, you know, I, but I'm not afraid if it's gonna give me the product I want, I'll, I'll embrace it. But um, here's what I did for this one then. I decided to start from plain caulking and I thought I'd put it on an actual board that I've hard-coded um, with Envirotex, painted blue, so I'd get the best color rendering against the base because I felt like this might be deceptive. Because of the brown bottom, perhaps I'm not seeing how much more it would look like water on the right surface, so I wanted to do as close to a real test as possible with this one. Very light tint of blue in it, and... Um, the same color that I use for to tint the Envirotex. And I also read that you can add glycerin to your um, caulking because I don't want to get into the chemistry of it, um, but basically the kind of silicone caulking that you buy in a store is different than the kind of catalyzed caulking that you use for molds. And the glycerin can act as a, a rapid cure, so it will set it up fast. Because once it skins over, sometimes the interior can take a long time or may never dry if it's too thick. This is not that thick, but that can happen. So I decided, let's add a little bit of glycerin by itself. Then let's add a little glycerin and xylene and thin that down. And I was like, oh, that's getting a little bit better. I like that consistency. Then I did a lot more xylene and got a, I think, not a bad effect. Like, just for an experiment, I was like, this could be really workable. And again, 
here's where I start to revisit the concept of, oh, actually, I should show you the top half because I modified the bottom half, so really, we'll just look at the top here. And I thought, hmm, this is the kind of durability that I would love to have. This is really bonded um, to the um, uh, Envirotex really well. It's got a very good grip. I don't feel like that's going to peel off. So I set that aside, looked at it for a couple days, and thought about it, and realized that this side, let's see if I can get it to gleam a little bit. There we go. Look at how nice and glossy the original is. The more xylene I add, the less glossy. See how it's got a slight matte sheen to it? It's almost satin. So then, I thought, well, that must be, um, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just the way I applied this, maybe I should try it again, um, maybe with some more xylene in it. So then I added quite a bit more, and I got really the kind of wave effect that I feel like I can control, and I really liked how that came out, but man, it's so matte. I don't like that. So, so, all right, I'm still trying to be optimistic here. So then I thought maybe I'd go back well, wait, before I look at this, I am sorry I'm jumping around, but it has been two weeks and I've done a lot of things here. Then I went back to my original sheet. Of course, I didn't put a date on this, but when I compared um, most of the, let me get a backing for this. Most of the um, prominent products on the market that people use sometimes. So here's the Woodland Scenics Water Effects. I did the Liquitex Gel. I did um, the Water Gloss product that um, Scenic Express makes. And if you remember, I did um, the uh, Mod Podge Hard Coat and the regular Mod Podge. This is the original experiment that sent me on the Mod Podge journey um, because the Mod Podge just had a pretty decent Let's see, pretty decent gloss, nice, uh, you know, texture, easy to shape into waves. And all of these seem to be like, you know, for the Liquitex gel, it just felt a little stiff and I wasn't really confident I could get nice soft waves with it. Well, when I looked at this, I realized that is one hell of a crystal clear finish. I really like that. So I decided to go back and try and also put some of these out so I could do sort of side by side again, revisit them. I had a new water effect since I had done that experiment, the Vallejo water effects, which is another acrylic type gloss coating. And then I put some of the Woodland Scenics here just to do like a little side by side comparison. Well, then I set these out to, to sit and I was thinking about that a little more and I realized, man, that Liquitex that's got some badass gloss. That is a beautiful shine. It's really, I mean, I don't think this is going to capture it, but this stuff is really impressive. And um, the Vallejo is pretty decent, but notice, still got some hazing. And I put this on, um, on the 8th. So we're, you know, five, five days plus in. And it's still not totally clarified, which is something I really want because I don't want to have to compete with other colorings if I want it to be crystal clear. And the liquid, uh, Liquitex uh, medium gloss gel is, um, you know, the medium is the consistency, just really, really performing well. And then when I looked back at my original, I was like, how come I didn't really get impressed with it then? It's pretty nice looking. I don't know, maybe just because it was a gel, I felt like it would be too stiff. Anyway, no puns intended there, no, uh, no, no jokes. Uh, but So then I wanted to do a hardness test. That's my real question is durability. What's the issue with you know impressions on these objects over time since that's the original goal to try to fix? So I took little washers or um, little hex nut screws and I stacked them up on there and I stacked up some quarters on them to represent weight and I tried to press that into it and eh, I didn't really get very good results. Then I took um, um, paint pots and I turned them upside down and I put um, you know like a cup of water on it to really be aggressive and actually when I took a look, let's see, I really want, to, want this to get in focus here. Come on. Well, let's see. Oh, best probably in the glare. Um, I had a ring on here from the paint pot, and then it disappeared. And I only had it on there for probably three or so hours. But I had some other things on here longer, and if you can see, again, I know it's this is not optimum shooting with this camera in this light. Um, it's the best I can do, but you see that little line right there? 
That was an impression caused by a piece of styrene I had put on there with a little bit of weight, not a lot of weight, and it did mar it permanently. So it might be the kind of thing that, you know, you can't, I left that like overnight, and you can't maybe leave objects on it overnight, but for a few hours or something like that, it works better. Now, looking at this Liquitex gel, this is a much harder material than the Mod Podge. You know, just sort of with a fingernail test, you can feel it's a lot more resilient, but it will pick up a mark, and it will also pick up fingerprints a little bit. So it's not perfect, but it's better than any of the other materials that I've been looking at so far. I then went, finally, and came back in and put um, the Liquitex uh, gel right in between these two tests to see if I'm really misreading the gloss level. Maybe I'm not giving the silicone enough credit. And, you know, if I pan these across, I think you'll be able to see, man, that Liquitex gloss gel just blows the silicone out of the water for reflectivity. It just looks so sparkling compared to the other two. So, I don't know. So then I got a crazy idea. What if I coat the silicone with the gloss gel and then I'd get the rebound of the silicone and the glossy effect. So I tried that with not great results. Um, if you look at the bottom half here, okay, so here's my top half. I decided to go back over these originals and I spread this with my finger. Can you see those? I think those are showing up pretty well. All the streak marks, you know, from my thumbprint, all those streak marks. Then I tried it over here and I went in with a stipple action with the brush to try not to get any streak marks on it. Mm, I don't know. It, the stippling creates a, a more of a matte finish. Now that's one of the things, if you don't know much about mattes and clear coats, when matte clear coats dry, um, they actually have a crackleature, crackler, crackleature, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, they crack on the surface and that breaks up the light as it bounces off so it scatters the light and that uh, causes that matte effect where you don't get all those bright lights bouncing back at you. So I didn't really like that and, um, and then I tried, although I don't know if it's going to show as well here, um, brushing it on and mm, Maybe there's a lot of lines in it that might work well for water if I was careful, but it kind of makes it look like pulled taffy rather than a wave. You know, the wave would be really quite smooth as it undulates up, and uh, that's just not giving me the effect that I want. Um, so, and it doesn't really even look much glossier than the original. You know, that's not really a big improvement. So, so, I think I'm going with the Liquitex gel. I think that's where we're going to go from here. So, if you kept up with me through all of that, that's probably the most rambling video I've shot, and I don't like to just dribble on, even though I do sometimes, but I, I wanted to share with you at least all of the little processes that I went through and the ways that I tried to compare them. And... I find it a bit ironic that I'm coming back to something that I tested as an experiment probably, you know, like I said, eight months ago. One of the other concerns I have with acrylics is that sometimes they can reabsorb uh, moisture and they'll begin to cloud up under high humidity conditions. Um, you know, so I, at least I have this as a test piece that I can continue to monitor over time. But, you know, having looked at this and knowing that I put this down eight months ago, it looks great right now. And I, and the humidity has been going up. We've been getting rain. So I'm feeling pretty optimistic about it. It's the hardest acrylic material out of all the materials that I've tested so far. Uh, and it's fairly reasonably priced. Um, you know, the, a gallon of Mod Podge, I think was something in around the $12 range and a pint, um, I think um, a 16 ounce jar I saw online of Liquitex medium bodied gloss gel is uh, about six or seven dollars. So, I mean, it, it's considerably more expensive on a per unit volume, but not terribly expensive and, and actually a bit cheaper than some of the commercial products that are sold out there for water effects. So, um, you know, in conclusion, um, you know, that's the direction I'm going to go unless I can get some information from somebody that says uh, there's something better out there. Um, you know, I see a lot of people doing water effects a lot of different ways, and I know a lot of, um, you know, terrain 
uh, studios and, and shops are doing different things. And I'd love to share, you know, uh, this is sort of an overture to the community. If you've got another product that you think works fantastic and you're willing to share, that would be great. Um, but I'm really looking for something that meets that criteria of super high gloss, ultra clear transparency when it dries, and the highest durability possible to prevent marring. Um, and so those three qualities are very difficult to find in a single mat material. Um, I heard rumor from somebody out there that they were going to be making perhaps some kind of a, of a, of a non-self-leveling epoxy resin. Mm, so that would be super awesome if that ever comes out, but we may be a ways down the road from that. Um, in any case, I hope you enjoyed this, found something useful out of it, and uh, keep around the channel. I'll be back soon with another video, and uh, thanks once again for taking the time to watch. I, I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments down below. I'm happy to answer those and try to share a little more information if I miss something in this video. So thanks.